All right, The Expanse Season 2. Let's do this. Hey you going? Welcome to my The Expanse Season 2 Episode 1 Safe Review. Okay, so this being the start of a new season, I'm going to cut it some slack. There's new characters and new environments that I'm not familiar with or invested in, so I'll try to keep that in mind. So this episode begins on Mars with some soldiers in some spacesuits, and they're doing war games. And it seems that the main character of this quartet, Draper, is a woman with an Aussie accent. Or is it? A Kiwi accent. That might be a Kiwi accent. So it's bad enough understanding an Aussie at the best of times, but when they're wearing a full helmet and you have to hear them through a respirator, it's a bit difficult. So their spacesuits have these cool pods on their shoulders that fire what looks like 50 cal rounds, but in fact they're semi-guided missiles. So Draper gets the call that her and her squad are heading to Phoebe, which is where the Doninger found all those bodies frozen into the walls. And then we shift back to the Rosinante and Holden's having a nightmare that the entire ship is infected with the proto-molecule. But it was just a dream, so it's alright. Meanwhile, Amos is out in the airlock trying to open the safe that they found on the Anubis. And he finds that the inner core of it is temperature controlled and it's losing power. So whatever was being frozen in there is now defrosting. Uh oh. So Miller and Holden are both recuperating from their radiation exposure and they're arguing about whether the right thing is going to happen in the end with the people on Eros and the entire solar system. Uh, and it seems like Miller's more pessimistic while Holden's more optimistic. And is it just me or do the people look different? Like, is it just because they've had a moment to have a shower and a shave and put some clean clothes on? Or is there different lighting in this season? Or have the stars gone off and had a little bit of work done to them? A little bit of gym time maybe and a bit of a tan? So Amos gets the safe open and he finds that it's full of the proto-molecule. So that's going to suck. So back on Earth, Avasarala is selling the media on the idea that Fred Johnson was responsible for the stealth ships that attacked the Donja. So we find out that Dresden was responsible for overseeing the release of the protomolecule on Phoebe, and he was interested in how it mutated over time, like it was get, getting information from somewhere to form new shapes and new configurations. But he said that he needed a larger biomass to see what the protomolecule could actually transform into, given enough time and mass. So I guess that explains why they were heading to Eros. So Dresden reckons that Phoebe was originally from outside of the solar system and was captured by Saturn's gravity. Uh, so he wonders if maybe it was sent by someone else as a payload for a weapon. But who? And why? So back on the Rosinante and Miller wants to follow the signal that Kamal intercepted while they were leaving Eros. But Holden doesn't want to go in without knowing what they're getting themselves into, so he says that they should go back to Tycho first and organise with Fred Johnson to see what the best plan of attack is. And Amos basically agrees with him and says that's a good idea, and Miller says, No one asked you, no neck. That's a bad idea to rile up Amos. So Amos gets the idea that maybe they should fire the protomolecule into the sun and completely destroy it. But Nagata says that maybe they could use it to find out some sort of a vaccine or a cure. And then they could go back and cure the people on Eros. But no one wants to be near this thing in the meantime. So they decide that they need to find somewhere to stash it. So they try to make out that this Martian soldier Draper is a total badass mofo. I mean, she even arm wrestles robots. So Draper's crew starts arguing about who's more Martian. The people who decide to go to Mars, or the people who were born there. It's like the argument about the blood of the Covenant being thicker than the water of the womb. And Draper's team wants her to shag the lieutenant so they'll be able to get the inside gossip about what's going on. Now I recognise this lieutenant guy's voice, but they don't show his face very much. Usually they either show over his shoulder while he's addressing the troops, or they show him from the troops' point of view way off on some gantry somewhere. So I want them to show near his face so I can find out who this guy is. 
So it turns out the lieutenant's name is Sutton, and he doesn't want his team to start anything because he doesn't know who to believe, whether to believe the OPA about Earth starting the fight or whether to believe Earth about the OPA starting the fight. So he's like, I don't want either of them getting us to do their dirty work for them. And Sutton says that he was there when the Earth tried to destroy Mars uh, because they thought that if they couldn't have it, then nobody could. And Draper's ticked off because she thinks that Earth threatening Mars led Mars to put all their resources into the military rather than to terraforming and set them back 50 to 100 years. There could have been a green Mars by now. And I figured it out. Sutton is the voice actor for Nick from Left 4 Dead 2. So Aaron writes then at Mao's house and he's talking to him about the ships that are heading to Phoebe. And he's concerned that there's going to be evidence there of Earth trying to create a weapon. And then Miller and Holden both get injections in their shoulder that uh, apparently prevent cancer from growing. But it also makes them sterile. But that's okay because Holden's got sperm frozen while he was in the Navy and Miller doesn't want kids anyway. So then Amos confronts Miller about how he killed his friend Semi. And Amos is like, well, Semi wanted us to leave without you. And then Miller says, well, you didn't have to shoot him like a street rat. And then whammo! And then Amos got those crazy eyes. And then Amos dead set tries to kill Miller. Like he throws him around the room and onto a table and looks like he's about to rip his head off. But then Nagata intervenes and stops him. So then Avasarala meets with Aaron Wright and he acts all concerned for her and says that he wants to beef up her security. And she says, I don't worry about it. I've already looked into it and I'm way ahead of you. And she says that there's a faction of the OPA called the Black Sky who's apparently trying to assassinate her. And they show a guy's face on a tablet and he kind of looks familiar and I'm trying to work out where I recognize him from. So Aaron Wright wants Earth to blockade all the Martian ships and stop them from where they're going. And Admiral Souther says that the Martians don't care about fighting. They just want to get back to terraforming. And Aaron Wright basically says, hey, we're the big kids in the block. We need to start acting like it. So he's a bit of a warmonger. So it's decided then that Earth is going to deploy their fleet and secure any bases that Mars might be able to use for an attack. So Lieutenant Sutton has been informed that the Earth has sent the Nathan Hale to Phoebe and that their ship is faster than theirs. So, so the Earth ship is going to get there before the Mars ship does. And the Martians have informed Sutton that under no circumstances should Phoebe fall to Earth. And then we get some super cringy call and response style chant from the Martian soldiers. Like making a badass character is kind of difficult. If you pull it off, it's one of the best characters you can have. But if you fail, it's super cringy. And is it just me or does Draper always look like she's about to burst into tears? So Avasarala sets up a meeting with some guy in a park. And his name is apparently Kotya. And I think to myself, this guy looks super familiar. And then it dawns on me. It's Spartacus. Well, not Spartacus himself, but one of the actors from Spartacus. So it turns out that Kotya is a security slash spy type guy who grew up with her son. And Avasarala reveals to him that she lied to the media about the OPA blowing up the Nathan Hale uh, in order to buy her some time because she thinks that she's being set up. And then Holden and Nagata are loading a missile with the proto-molecule and Holden's making jokes about how he didn't get any superhero powers from the radiation and Nagata's like oh, I like that about you that you got the sense of humor and he says to her do you like space gladiator movies and I'm wondering is this a reference to airplane or is this a reference to Spartacus surely it wouldn't be a reference to Spartacus just because they have an actor from a tv show that no one knows about so they're prepping this missile and Nagata's checking in on Holden's well-being and they decide to turn their comms off and push each other's helmets, the glass, up against each other so that the vibration transfers their voice through from one helmet to the other. And they have a deep and meaningful. And then they go inside and they shag. But damn, Holden got ripped. And this is what I was kind of worrying about at the end of season one, where I thought it might have got a bit too love triangly, a little bit too much soppiness and smooching. I just hope it doesn't become days of our lives in space. Because, I mean, Amos is going to flip when he finds out about Nagata and Holden. 
So the Nathan Hale is heading towards Phoebe and the Sirocco is behind him. And the Sirocco fires a couple of missiles. So Draper's crew is like, what the hell? This is supposed to be a ground operation. And Draper's like, mm, maybe they forgot that we're here. Which is weird. Is she like losing her love for her comrades and siding more with the upper brass? So apparently the UN has a 20 minute delay on all information coming back from the belt. So they have a very limited window for which they have to decide whether this missile firing was an act of aggression or not. And Avasarala asks the rest of the commanders if there's any other ships that are changing direction. And they find out that they're all maintaining their heading. So she says that this is just a bit of chest thumping. So Avasarala says that she knows the captain of the Nathan Hale ever since he was at the academy. And he's the kind of guy that wouldn't retaliate. But then it turns out that she was bluffing because the captain of the Nathan Hale has never actually been to the academy. So it seems that she's put a spanner in Aaron Wright's hopes of sparking a war. So it turns out that the missiles were actually intended for Phoebe. And Phoebe blows up and its chunks spiral into Saturn. So Miller also jettisons Semi's corpse into space. And I'm kind of wondering if that's going to be like some sort of evidence that they were there. Is it going to come back to bite them? So Alex decides that he wants everyone to get together and he, he cooks them a lasagna so that they can all have a chat over a meal instead of over their work. And now I really want lasagna. And Amos suddenly chills out around Miller because he wants to hear more of these cheese fart stories. And then the episode ends with Draper arguing with Sutton. Draper seems to want war with Earth. I don't know if she thinks that maybe if they get Earth off their back that she can finally go back to Earth and terraform it and maybe she'll finally see that green Mars that she's always wanted. So I know I said I was going to go easy on this episode because it's the first episode of a new season, but I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 because I think there was a bit of a drop off from the last episode. The last episode was such a peak. It was such a high. So to go back to normal is a bit... uh, But I'm looking forward to the next episode. So I want to say that these new Martian characters haven't really done anything for me yet. And I said it on a previous Star Trek Picard review that whenever there's an Aussie actor in a foreign production, it always creeps me out a bit. And it kind of pulls me out of the universe. And I don't think that the actor that's playing Draper is really setting the world on fire for me. But once again, the special effects are fantastic and so is the overarching story. It's great. I'm really worried that they're going to spiral into a love triangle between Nagata, Holden and Amos. Especially while we've already got a triangle of Mars, Earth and the belt. And this episode kind of ended with things up in the air. Like everyone was kind of aimless towards the end of this episode. Everything that was sort of in effect had been wrapped up. Maybe once the crew get to Tycho, things will ramp up a bit and we'll have a bit more of a concrete direction. So I hope you enjoyed this review as much as you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back next week after watching episode two. Like, comment, subscribe. 